time that way everybody can leave more or less on time. Uh, and so at the back of the agenda is our rules, so I don't have to get into reading them to you. That way it's safe for the five minutes. It also gives you the history of the organization and what we're about. Uh, this is an English stakeholder. It does not do endorsements. It, it stays neutral. And uh, basically, this is one of the community groups. Uh, we're we're going to need uh, uh, to help them with a uh, uh, place for his wheelchair. Somewhere in the front. No, no. It, it, over those chairs. Where do you want to position yourself, Edward? Um, anyway, uh, so we'll go around the room and uh, do introductions. Again, my name is Mike Nolte. I'll be facilitating the meeting today. Uh, and uh, my contact information is on the back. Uh, and uh, I'll go to the next, to the, over this way. Okay. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm David Elliott Lewis, and I have a brief announcement since it says announcement at the beginning. I'm also co chair of the Mental Health Board of City County of San Francisco. And tonight we're actually having our monthly meeting. And so it's just it's apropos. It's at City Hall at 6:30 in room 278. And we're going to be actually asking the public about what they what direction the mental health board should go in. We're actually seeking input. We're trying to change the way we do business. So if you have any ideas about services you'd like to see us look at or explore or talk about, please let us know tonight at City Hall, room 278. 6.30 p.m. Thank you. The it's, it's about a two-hour meeting. Okay, so you can come for part of it, even part of it is great. What is the okay. microphone like? Okay. It's three uh, times yeah. throughout the meeting. Okay. Three times. So they give you three minutes each time to speak. So you can actually speak for up to nine minutes total across the three times. Okay. Okay, um, next person. Uh, my name is Amos Gregory. I'm the founder um, of the uh, San Francisco Veterans Bureau Project. Um, Veterans Alley. I don't know if anyone here has uh, heard of Veterans Alley. You heard of Veterans Alley? Okay. I took pictures of it. You took photos? Okay, mm -hmm. great. And um, it's a mural project that I created here uh, in the Tenderloin. Uh, it was founded in October 2011. Um, it sits between uh, Taylor and Jones, Gary O'Farrell. Presently, the alley is officially uh, named Shannon Alley. And I created that project after I had been photographing homeless veterans. Okay, we kind of have to keep it short because you're going to have a presentation. Okay, great. So we'll move on to the next, next person. Uh, Ed. Edward Evans. Uh, Edward Evans, Community Resources Action Project, San Francisco Health Plan, uh, Muni Accessible Advisory Committee. Okay, uh, yeah. Hello. Hi. Bean? Bean, B-E-A-N. Um, just walked in. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm Wynn with the Tenway Economic Development Project. I'm Michael Rodriguez. I'm here to introduce my restaurant that I'm opening up the Cadillac Bar Group. And uh, my name is Terrence Allen, and I'm here with Michael Rodriguez. In the back. Yes, my name is Anthony Baldwell. I'm with TMDC. I'm a year of AmeriCorps. I'm food right. justice. Good morning, I'm Daniel Flores. I'm a candidate for judge of uh, the San Francisco Superior Court. Good morning, I'm Eric Santa Cruz. I'm uh, Daniel Flores' campaign intern. Cool. Oh. Susan? Oh. Uh, <clears throat> Susan Bryan, resident videographer. I'm uh, Matthew Warner. I'm a freelance journalist, writer. I work for the uh, Jefferson Hotel Paper. Good uh, to your friends of Boating Park.
Vietnam era, era veterans. We've, we've had Iraq, Afghan veterans uh, come in and paint uh, their stories on the wall. Uh, we've re reached out and worked with World War II, Korean War veterans, all up painting this particular alley. And then the alley is really is, uh, become uh, known, affectionately known with this community around it. Uh, now it's Veterans Alley. And so um, what happened was, was that after we had so much media attention, um, other veterans from around the country and actually in, and around the world started contacting us about doing your projects in their communities. And then so we um, what started here in this community with me and this homeless vet that was walked over for 15 years uh, now exists in Puerto Rico. We went down to Puerto Rico and we created a community in uh, San Juan called La Perla. And uh, the Puerto Rico Veterans Mural Project exists on the rooftops of Puerto Rico. And then so presently today, there are Puerto Rican veterans that are out there and they're painting their story there now. Um, then we also took the project down to uh, Tijuana, Mexico. And uh, we worked with a very, very special group of veterans. These are deported veterans. These are veterans that uh, were uh, non-citizens, uh, green card holders, served uh, in the military and were deported. And so now the Deported Veterans Mural Project really resides down on the border fence um, in Mexico, and they paint their stories there. Our next city that is uh, really moving along right now is uh, Portland, Oregon, and they're starting to organize along those lines. And there's also Philadelphia, uh, Pennsylvania, that is contacting us. Um, so it's not only us uh, in this community that's painting along these walls, because we've got, like, we've covered over 30,000 square feet. Um, our Biggest mural was, you know, took us 10 weeks and we covered an entire building that's four stories high. And um, we couldn't have accomplished all of this uh, along by ourselves. And so after the project started, um, in this community, traditionally, um, I think that uh, <coughs> veterans have, uh, have, um, have been a voiceless part of this community. Um, many of the art institutions and um, public, particularly public art institutions were, um, that are prevalent in the city today um, were created um, during the time of the Vietnam era and they were created by conscientious objectors. And um, conscientious objectors and actual veterans are two different breeds of people. And the messages and the images and the, um, uh, that was put out there um, really harm um, the veterans, and um, and I still work with Vietnam veterans that are still suffering from from their experiences here in the city and this community, um, uh, how they were treated. And, and today is a new day um, because now we've taken our own stories, our own voices, and we've taken our own our own space. And it's the first time we're at our own public space where we actually are telling talking about our own stories. And um, what has happened um, is, is that you know we're, we're your neighbors, you know we're, we're your, your fathers, we're your cousins. We are. We represent um, a very interesting demographic because we represent pretty much every racial, ethnic, sexual group within uh, our country. And um, once we heal, you heal. And uh, the community at large now are starting to paint also along with us uh, in Veterans Alley. Um, for example, last year we hosted our own summer camp and we had um, 20, 25 uh, at-risk youth uh, from a, a project called uh, Rock SF and they came out and they painted with us in Veterans Alley. Um, we recently did a memorial um, in Veterans Alley in honor of a young, uh, a young lady named Sherry um, Sherry sat in the alley for the last for three years watching us paint. Um, she, you know, she had an interesting occupation and um, a lifestyle, but she was loved by all of us. And, but she was unfortunately she was murdered in November on the um, corner of uh, Jones and O'Farrell. And um, and the people on the street um, that call the street home uh, are really big part of this project, and they were grieving. And then so I went out um, at night with them and we painted a, um, a mural uh, in honor of her. And then so it's not only us now that are painting our stories on the walls, but it's also the community at large. 
and um, and we also have um, have started teaching photography and videography because it was the photography that project that enabled me to become embraced by this community, which led to the invitation to help transform uh, Shannon Alley into the Veterans Alley, and then so our our model and, and our project is each one teach one. What we have, what we do, um, we teach to you, you teach to us, and we learn about each other. And so um, the project is actually a healing project. And so Shannon Alley is no longer known as Crack Alley. Um, it's affectionately known as Veterans Alley. It draws visitors uh, naturally from all over the world now uh, that come in to see the images that we've painted on those walls. And, um, and because of where it sits, it sits at the dichotomy of, um, of, um, of, the, uh, of the, in the economic inequality that exists in our country today. Because we can write all types of articles, we can, we can have all types of news, we can write all types of books about economic inequality, but when you sit on O'Farrell and Taylor, it's right there in your face. Because where Vets Alley sits is one line away from the heart of the financial district <coughs> and the heart of the timber. Just one exact line away. And then so what is there is, um, is actually is happening is, is that we have all of these folks that are coming in, that are walking down the street that normally would have seen this and just taking left or taking a right. And but they see this like these beautiful images and they take that right and they go into Veterans Alley and they see those images and now they're interacting with that community that's there. And it's really okay. interesting. Can we focus on your future? Okay, future. Because you did a lot of good history. Okay, a lot of great history. A lot of great history. So one interesting thing too is, is that with it, economic inequality and then the things that we were saying was that we knew that us going in and approaching the city of San Francisco, any government agency <coughs> is not going to happen, um, uh, be very fruitful for us uh, in the beginning, because uh, we traditionally didn't have a voice, and the messages we were putting up there, uh, the status quo didn't want to hear. So I'm a disabled veteran, Gabe's a disabled veteran, so this project has actually been funded by us out of our own pockets. And so now after three years of integration into the community, um, we've been painting out there without any safe space for us. So when we have to meet, and we have to sit down, and we have to like draw, we have to figure out how to do our murals. We have to figure out where on the street we have to actually accomplish this work because we don't have the safe space to actually do that. And then so after we gain all this awareness within the city and internationally, we approach the city, we approach uh, our supervisor, Jane Kim, about our predicament. And we started to engage with the TNDC um, to actually get a facility here in the community. And uh, right now, we're submitting our last of our paperwork to get a facility on 476 Eddy Street. And what we would like to do is, we would like to, to get this facility, we would like to go in the facility, and we would like to design a community center. And the community center, would we, the title presently right now, we're bouncing around is the Veterans Art and Healing Center. And, um, but, it's not only with, including veterans, because Vets Alley is vets plus the community. So what we want to do is take all the stuff we've been doing and everything that we've accomplished outside by ourselves, we want to put it into a safe environment. We want to go in, we want to build our own audio, our own video lab. We want to be able to teach um, painting, the art of painting, public art, um, to the members of this community of how to actually accomplish what we accomplished over there in Vets Alley. Because within a community, you're talking about public art. Public art is supposed to represent the community at large, the people that actually live there. What do you need from us? Yes. What, we need, we, one, we need support um, to assure that we get the lease. Um, and we need um, maybe guidance on who and where, who and where would we actually find minimal funding, but mostly uh, material to build the space, and also how to engage the community at large, because it's not me, but we. Because we want 
all of us to actually design this and all of us to utilize this. You like art, there's an organization called Visual Aid, which raises money and provides art supplies directly to artists who are challenged.